While heading north from the VLP-58 power station, we find an electric pylon surrounded by a makeshift fence. Inside are two ghoul wastelanders who aren't interested in making another friend. With the inhabitants out of the way, we can pick up the first Keller family transcript, the first of five. Tina, it's me, your brother, Alex. Listen, mom would kill me if she knew I was contacting you, but she's being an impossible bitch right now. You have to come home, do you understand me? This thing with China, it's not going away. We're gonna try and get into one of those vaults. If that doesn't work, well, I have a backup plan. There's this secure bunker, another sort of vault, inside the National Guard depot, and... Look, no matter what it takes, the whole damn Keller family's gonna ride this storm out, but you've got to get your ass home. Now! I wonder how far Tina would have to travel in order to get home. And why was the mother acting so weird? Let's move on and hope we can learn more of the story. Around the pylon we find some first aid, a pre-war book on one of the bases, and a mini nuke resting on another. That's it for the pylon. The next holotape can be found at the Hallowed Moors Cemetery northwest of Moresti Station. Surrounding the church are a number of super mutants along with their centaur guard dogs. Inside we have the choice of freeing a wasteland captive. Doing so will grant you positive karma and also a random item if you agree to take it. For me it was some pre-war food. To our side we find the body of a dead wastelander. In their pockets are some chems and a bottle of purified water. On the shelf is a first aid kit, a DC journal of internal medicine and a pack of darts. On the other side of the church are a couple of ammo boxes and a secret stash of grenades under a box. Nothing near the overturned table, but on the table still upright we find a mini nuke snugly tucked inside a box. The only thing left is the podium, where we find a big book of science and the second transcript. Paul, it's me, Tina. I heard back from my sister Candace. We couldn't get into a vault. 101, 87, didn't matter. All full to capacity. But my brother Alex is a soldier and he sort of stole the passcode for a secure army bunker. He did it for the family but they caught him. Before they took him into custody, Alex, he sent us each one number of the four-digit code. That way we all have to be together to get in. He gave me number five, the day of my birth. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm still leaving. It's been fun, kind of. Oh, and I'm not pregnant, so no worries. Tina spoke to someone named Paul who we can assume she was having a relationship with, hence the statement about not being pregnant. We can also assume that Tina and Paul were living together, or near one another. Alex did say in the previous holotape that she should come home, suggesting that she was living elsewhere, perhaps at a university campus. Tina's sister Candice had no luck getting into one of the local vaults, so their only chance of survival is to follow through with the brother's plan. Alex was taken into custody but somehow managed to leak a four-digit code to his family. If those who found him suspected an intelligence leak, it's likely the password would have been changed or increased to a more secure number of digits. If so, the family's chances of making it seem very slim. The adventure to find the next transcript has the player running along a broken road just north from the Temple of the Union. At the crest of a small hill is a worn out Dot's Diner. On our Pip Boy, the location is called the Grizzly Diner. Getting closer, we can see why. Surrounding the diner are a number of live frag mines. Let's just go ahead and disarm those. Around back, we can spot the next holotape, but let's leave it for a moment and go back to the front entrance. From out here, we can see the raider's signature graffiti, but no sign of any raiders. Stepping inside, we find a selection of body parts and organs. Nothing of interest on this side of the counter, a moment of searching on the other side and we hear voices. A raider ambush. Come on, boy. Kick it. On the floor is a pressure plate linked to a rotten Brahmin leg, and on the wall is an oversized first aid box with a blood pack and three stim packs. 
Heading outside, we find a nice supply of ammunition, a missile launcher, and the third Keller family transcript. Mom, it's Candace. Oh my god, it's really happening. I can see the cloud. It's so big. Mom, I'm so scared. I'm heading to the vault now. I'll do whatever I can to get inside. My number of the passcode was seven, right? Judging by the sound, it's difficult to determine if Candace survived the blast. Hopefully, we won't have to wait too long to find out. The fourth location brings the player to Rockbreaker's last gas. Nearby, we can see a shack atop a small hill. We'll head there shortly. At the gas station, we find a dead wastelander surrounded by Nuka-Cola and various pieces of food. Looking on top of the left vending machine is a lone bottle of Nuka-Cola Quantum. On our way to the summit, we find two super mutants. There are still more in the area, but we make it to the shack's entrance without any issues. Inside, we hear the familiar sound of Rad Roaches chittering. But these roaches appear to be someone's pets, names included. On the right, we have Jitters, and on the left is Fluffy. Everything becomes cuter when it has a name, doesn't it? The important loot of this location is the unique sniper rifle in the locker. This rifle has a unique effect that other rifles just don't seem to have. If you score a critical hit, the enemy will be knocked down, leaving the target in a vulnerable state and making it much easier to shoot from a distance. On the table, we find a pre-war book and a small gun skill book. Sitting on the bed is an oversized teddy bear. You're coming with me. At the bottom of a box is a Dean's Electronics magazine, and on the top shelf of one of the lockers is a Stealth Boy. Not a bad haul. Lastly, on the workbench, we find the fourth holotape. Ralphie, son, this is your father. We can't get into the goddamn vault without you. Get your ass over here now. My four is useless without you, boy. In total, the family only needed four numbers. Tina has five, Candice has seven, which she was confirming with her mother on the third holotape, so we can assume they were given a shared number. The father has the number four, which just leaves Ralphie. Let's see what became of him. The final transcript can be found at a small unmarked location northwest from Dukov's place. As we approach, we see two centaurs with a third hostile dot remaining in the tent. Let's see if we can get the drop on him. As we pass the smoldering fire and the unfortunate corpse of a wastelander, we hear the footsteps of a super mutant overlord. Searching the trucks first, we find another corpse next to a scoped magnum, and a pugilism illustrated. The other trailer is empty. Inside the tent, we have a choice to free another wasteland captive. This time, we receive a Nuka-Cola. Searching for these holotapes has been thirsty work. All that's left is some ammo boxes, a stim pack, and the final tape. Candace, it's Ralph. Tell Dad there's no way in hell I'm spending nuclear Armageddon trapped with him in a fucking closet. You can have my number. It's six. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a mushroom cloud to walk into. Have a happy holocaust. Is the father really all that bad, to the point of committing suicide instead of surviving with your family? Something about Ralph just strikes me as unstable. Either way, we now have all four numbers, and all we need to do now is locate the National Guard Depot. But that is a task for another time. Before you go, I would like to remind you of five things you could do to support the channel. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and enable notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.